Welcome back to Draymond Does Gaming. Draymond here playing a new game today, The Pale Beyond. Well, I won't say it's a new game, it's like a year and a bit old. Um, but this game is very reminiscent to, um, say, like the Vinland Saga, Banner Saga, This War of Mine, uh, among those types of games. In it, it's a it's very much a story esque game. Uh, I don't think it's overly long either. Um, you know, ten to twenty hours type of thing. So, we'll we'll see how actual long it is. Um, but in it, we are a captain of a ship, trying to find another ship in the pale beyond. We have to manage our crew, um, our supplies, and there will be events that happen along the way. A bit like a choose your own adventure again, kind of like the Vinland Saga. Oh, or Banner Saga, or even, yeah, like this war of mine where you have a small group of people that you're trying to keep happy um, and keep all your resources up. Um, I played just through the prologue of this. Um, it's like the first two weeks of the game. Um, and really, that's, that's it, just to kind of get an idea of how this plays. Um, so from there, we're just going to get started with a new game today and take it from the beginning. Just on the normal setting, um, there's a classic balancing. I don't know what any of these do um, hard other than makes it just harder. I'm not ready to do that because again this game is more about the story than the gameplay. Um, it's kind of more of an experience. So we're going to experience that together today. Oh. The air bees cold. Oh, flake and white as a sailor begs their pledge. That in the dark they'll brace themselves for horrors still ahead. To the souls around them, shielding fear, dividing up their dread, a hunger draws this desperate here. Such lonely souls need lead. What will ye do when steel hearts break and courage does its haunt? I'll do must I'll do what must be done indeed out in the pale beyond. Begin your journey. Temperance. It's not a good sign. <laughs> And you'll see for why. Um, crew wanted, able-bodied crew wanted for dangerous expedition, months of darkness, low wages, slim chance of safe return, glory to be had in the event of success. You were alone in the office. The tea in your hand is long since cold. I'd rather coffee. Looking around the room, you can make a collection of military books on the desk is a ship in a bottle. A metronome ticks away steadily. I find it rather calming. The dedicated rhythm soothes the senses. It stops. Keep waiting. You hear footsteps climbing the stairs that brought you here. Remain standing. The door behind you swings open. The captain bounds past you to the other side of the desk. Do you have all your teeth? I have enough to get by. Can never be too careful. The captain sits down. It's little things you can lose people to. Are you speaking from experience? How many people have died under your supervision? More than I care to admit. Can you remember their faces? Every single one. Hmm. Please take a seat. Sit down. The chair is uncomfortably large. The feet seat feels worn. I'm Captain Hot Hunt. Pleasure is mine, Robin Shaw. He nods. On your ship, or on your desk, what ship is that? Ah, oh, this detailed, isn't she? Incredibly. 
an old sailor superstition. I hope you aren't waiting too long. I'm told it's worth the wait. Good. There's been a lot of candidates. Some good, some bad, interesting mix. I'm sure you understand the need for discretion. The yeah, advert said there was glory to be had. Months of darkness, low wages, slim chance of safe return. That didn't deter you, did it? Quite the opposite, that's why I'm here. A thirst for adventure, then. He winks. I keep that to yourself around the other sailors, they might drown you in it. I have a few questions first. He looks down at his list of questions. Were you a landlubber or a sea dog? Mixed, if I knew, I'd tell you. i have been all over. But I'm here now. Ah, mutt wash. Plenty of those joining, myself included. Military experience. Yeah, so this is some something cool about this game. Um, so whatever you pick here, it will affect dialogue later on. Um, I'm just kind of going through it just as a story. So, Royal Admiral. Two tours. A mutt wash from the Navy. I guess I'm not that special these days. Under what circumstances did you leave? <laughs> In one piece? You'd be surprised how many can't even say that. Have you ever fired a weapon? Yes. Have you ever killed a man, directly or otherwise? Yes. I see. You're not married, are you? Of course not. You better not have a death wish. One must believe they'll return to justify living in the first place. Any less than you're doing yourself a disservice. So where are we headed? We're here to find that ship in the bottle. The Viscount. Heard of it? No. Enlighten me. He clears his throat. Five years ago, she set sail on a research expedition towards the dead peninsula. They were trying to find and study the absolute magnetic south. If they found it, I might have heard of them. She never came back. Her last known location was 200 miles south of land, presumed lost to the ice. And we're supposed to be chasing the ship. Exactly. I'm going to need more than rumors about lost ships if I'm putting my life at risk. Naturally, here's what we do know. Not one person or thing has been heard of in the Viscount since it first left port. Until now. Until now. Someone was found who claims to have been on that ship. And where are they now? Dead, but their testimony seems to have outlived them. Those with more money than sense want that old ship. That's the job. If I don't pick the first mate, somebody else will, and, well, my judge of character's gotten me this far. What of our own ship? We traveling aboard the Temperance. She's a beauty, Greenwood, generational. Not many like it left these days, the Viscount and the Temperance. They're sister ships, built together. Sent out into this world to die alone. Poetic. Indeed. I like to think that one calls out for the other. The captain looks at the bottled ship. So what do you think? It's worth it if there's a chance anyone's alive. I agree. The captain checks his watch. Anyways, I think I've heard enough. He stands up. We leave in a month. Welcome aboard, Shaw. Proverbially speaking. <clears throat> Not what I expected. And what did you expect? <clears throat> or more than our mistakes, Robin. Don't let people surprise you. I'll see you on the Temperance. Got a good feeling about you, Shaw. Thank you, Captain. Makes his way to the door, and you follow. You arrive at the docks a month to the day. Before you lies a ship, letters on the side read temperance. So this is how a majority of the game is going to work. 
um, lots of dialogue talking between people. Um, there will be these points on the map that we'll be able to click on that will um, give us some story points and things to, to go to do. You walked the cobble to the boarding ramp. Beside is a sharply dressed man overseeing the loading cargo. He turns to you with a stern expression. You can feel his eyes assessing you. Military gate, you must be Hunt's pick for first mate. I figure he'd keep in the ranks. Good man. Extends an arm. Richard Templeton, a pleasure. You accept his offer of a handshake. It's a considered shake. I shall be operating as the chief science officer on this expedition. I'm also the incumbent representative of our benefactor. I do, however, consider myself and my team, I, you and the captain's disposable. What did you specialize in? Applied botany. <laughs> Interesting. Uh, Mr. Temple, I look forward to working together. I expect you to be up for the task. Some of the layabouts Hunt hired are questionable at best. No doubt, I need to inform you of your duties, your second only to Captain Hunt himself. But I must warn you that you have quite the task ahead. The rabble I spent the afternoon sorting are the same that you'll have to whip into shape. Punctuality, schedule, a strict adherence is what we need if this expedition is to succeed. I expect you be the organized sort. You would not have been assigned the role otherwise. I have more than enough experience with a crew of this nature. That's comforting to hear. It seemed for the most of the crew, the captain favored personal history over expertise. It's good to know he found the capable sort for such a valuable role. Let me know when you're ready to depart. Less valuable time and waste here, the better. Now we have some chances to look around and be gone for quite a while. Be some time before you see the city again. Young man stands at the ramp, stealing himself for the journey ahead. Intently, he begins to drag his feet up the ramp and onto the ship. Hunt's description of the ship was accurate, near identical to the Viscount, barring some modern additions. Whenever you see these yellow ones, that's kind of like the thing. So, we're going to set sail. I'm going to see the intro here. Week one. One week on the Temperance. Whew. That came in loud. The Pale Beyond. It's been a month. Yeah, so we will have this log that we'll be able to go and check out every now and then. First Mate Shaw, personal log. It's been one month since I signed on, and one week since we've set aboard the Temperance. I'm told the waters um, will get warmer as we pass the hemisphere, before they turn colder. Temperance. The Admiralty has nothing like this. She's magnificent. Technical marvel. Elegant machinery. Expertly weaved through one of the fastest hardwood ships of its day. Reborn for this mission, breathing again with life, she's simply magnificent. I can't help but wonder who's footing the bill for all this. Certainly not the captain. Such exquisite modifications to the ship mustn't have come cheap. I intend to investigate this further. As for its master, he mostly kept to his quarters so far. I need to know if I can trust Captain Hunt. He's not telling the whole truth. But despite that, I find myself warming to the man. There are now 22 of us, including the captain. Our next port will be our last before we enter the ice to pick up the remaining four members of the crew of the scouting team. Hunt is also keen to work out a deal on a pack of sledding dogs. Crew are staying strange lot. Eclectic is the ship itself. One of Hunt's sailors approaches. Ah. <laughs> That's not what I wanted to do. Sorry, one sec. Uh, there we go. 
Captain wants you at the helm. Good. I want to see him. Humph. He leaves. So, we have our ship here. There'll be places to go, things to see, um, and people to talk to. So, we'll be clicking around as much as we can. Crow's Nest currently stands unoccupied. Scouting team expect to join at the next port. The forecastle is locked. Hunt's cabin is locked. So we'll join them at the helm. You ascend the stairs to the stern and find the old captain manning the helm of this ship. Ah, Robin, lovely day for it, isn't it? It is indeed, Captain. Indeed. It stays like this. I make sure to do my share of the sailing. He winks. Too old to stomach a storm? Ha, huh, perhaps. We want to rob the actual helmsman from the learning experience, though. He thinks for a moment before stepping aside and stretching out a wrinkled hand. Do you ever take the helm in the Admiralty? Never fight re felt right <laughs> not to. Sure, we'll take the wheel. Grip the wheel of the ship and feel the weight of the waves in your hand. Memory in your muscles rear themselves you begin to move in time with the ship and the wind. Easy. That's kind of tutorial on how things work here. He pats you on the back. Fantastic. I'll try to get a sense of where we are. Get some perspective. Peaceful, isn't it? And those can all be adjusted. He takes the wheel back from you. I think I'll drink the morning in a little longer. Would you mind preparing my quarters for the day's work? There's much to do. Yeah, looks like that's the only thing we can do right now, so let's go there. Pristine furnished tub secured to the floor. Luxury you had on the ice. Classical painting depicting sailors doing battle with a kraken. An ode to an old folk story known to all Captain Seamus. Or was it Hamish? The desk you make out a variety of papers, notes, and maps, as well as a sealed letter with a stamp you don't recognize. The desk itself is suspended with ropes to keep it safely in place. Take a seat at the end of the room. Captain joins you. Now let's run through our provisions before taking requests. To start, there's 23 souls signed on to this expedition, ourselves included. 16 free to be assigned to tasks. If they aren't already busy, the rest are deployed to their permanent stations. If you're only able to deploy crew, you've discovered, so we actually have to go and find out all these people and talk to them all. They must be in good health, not otherwise deployed to another post. Picking up the scouting crew at the next port. A lot of us seem to be in good spirits. That's our morale or decorum. Yeah, so if, if we ever end a week without any, we lose. No provisions last at least six months in case of emergency. Can't afford the minimum food. People crew will become malnourished. And then scurvy and then death. And then more than enough fuel to see us there and back again. So colder temperatures will go up. Um, fuel is required at the end of the week. It's kind of the same thing as the food. Um, they go come freezing to frostbite to death. And sledding dogs, well, they're still a matter of negotiation. Dogs will need to send sledding teams out to gather resources on the ice, sending hunts. Oh, further requires great amount of dogs. The rest may become available between weeks. Alright. We have two people to talk to. Let's talk to Cordell. Have you agreed upon my conditions? To the point, eh? Shaw, this is Lady Cordell. Cordell is here to provide us with a kennel of hounds for the sleds. Our agreement was that she would train them up until we part ways at the Nyhurst Island. However, you neglected to inform me that you were bringing my dogs to the Pale Passage. I have no intention of sending the pack to its death. You seem to have a good faith in this expedition. It's one thing to ask for my whole kennel. It's another to drag them into the ice to chase a myth. Never has a buyer been so dishonest. Never has a seller made such strong demands. Lady Cordell? A moniker given to me by the locals of the city. On account of the vernacular. I find it odd that you seem to have researched me as much as you have my kennel. I'd like to know who I'm negotiating with. Regardless, Shaw. She demands we allow her to come on the expedition as a member of the crew. And the ship have experience and familiarity with these dogs that I possess. 
If you're taking them to such a brutal location, they will need me to guide them if they have a chance of survival. Humans on board too, of course. Of course. You can see my dilemma, Shaw. Bring on another member of the crew is a risk. Our hands may be tied. Your thoughts? Yeah. Don't see the harm of having the expert on with the sled dogs. Good point, Shaw. He turns to her. Deal's already in sheer benefit. Do you have anyone on board with extensive training in the management of and ruling of dogs? Your sleds are useless if you can't control them enough to haul them. I would like to ensure my dogs are treated properly. Welcome aboard. Your knowledge should prove valuable. Invaluable. For room prepared for you below deck. So let's see our sizes increase, so that means we'll need more food. No need, you'll find me in the forecast with the dogs. If I'm not making mistakes, Shaw. We have 14 dogs. Corvid. We found a stowaway in the lower hold. Bring them in. Another sailor enters, leaving a young man behind. You know, you're not the first stowaway I've had. Kemp studies them further. You know where we're heading, don't you? I do, sir. The ice. You know that before you climbed into the crate? I did, sir. How old are you? You're hardly a useful pair of hands. Not true, I can pull my weight, sir. Are you driven from your bowsprit? I do. I did all for my da. Your da? He's Ward's son. Followed him on board back in the city. Smurf. Um, what should we do with him, Captain? Hmm. Well, Shaw, i eyes you up. You're first rate. What should we do? I keep him on board. Hunt squints. Why? Need all the help you want. Clear it. Be wrong. Separate them again. Hmm. One of these two. Uh, you need all the help you can get. This young man wants to help. I'd say we'd let him. All right, boy. Consider yourself part of the crew. I'm sure, you keep your nose clean and follow orders. I will. Thank you, sir. Captain, not sir. I, Captain. The stowaway joins the two sailors below deck. Now a member of the crew. Seems the litter has a new runt. I hope the rest won't mind sharing their rations. What of their father? I doubt he intended this to happen. Or what? What of the father? Should he be punished for letting this happen? Another mouth to feed on the ice can make the difference between life and death. B. I doubt he wanted his son here. I suppose you're right. You will make a sailor of him by the end of this. Well, the matter sorted. So that's where a big meat of this will be. In the um, assigning orders and things at the start of each week. Now that's all that settled, I have one more errand for you to run. Could you grab the Stoke brothers and order them meet me up deck after dinner? Hefty lads, red hair, couldn't mistake them for another. Who are they? You haven't met all the crew yet? Stoke's been serving me for years. They'll be down on the middle deck. In the meantime, you should grab a copy of the crew manifest and get acquainted with them. Perfect. Nothing else to do here, so let's leave. Let's see, we have, like, all this stuff here that we can do. Um, join the figure balancing on the mast. There would be a figure there. Upon closer inspection, you make up the ship's photographer, Kasha Belford. Balance on the ship's mast with her camera, line you up a photo. Let's wait for her to finish. Snapping a photo, uh, she clambers down, only noticing you on her landing. Oh, Officer Shaw. It's about time I first met the first officer of the ship. Kasha, Kasha Belford. Yes, I've heard of you already. Nice to meet you. Yeah. Nice to meet you, Kasha. I suppose there was some sort of rule against what I was doing up there. Deepest apologies. Sometimes there's a shot you just cannot pass up. Accomplished photographer Kasha Belford won the Bentler Prize, the highest honor in journalism for her work covering plague outbreaks and riots in the capital. It came as a surprise to many that such a reputable journalist would take such an interest in this expedition. There's scarcely any chance of Hunt or the benefactor turning her away. Some of her accolades to be older, more experienced, it's like the, the first time on the sea. Her proof is all we have. Unless we devise a way to bring the Viscount back with us, her proof is all we have. Hmm. The cold game. Picture that as a header. 
For the piece on this voyage, I'm trying to come up with a snappy name. No one will read it if the title sounds like a work of an amateur. With the creative type, I'm sure you'd know better. Sounds fine, I like it. Kasha places a finger and squinting her eye in thought. It's not perfect, but it's a work in progress. Plenty of time. We haven't even hit the ice yet. It's all just so exciting already. Suppose some of your experience finds it all boring at this point. Trip the ice may seem dull compared to the Royal Admiral. I'm not averse to thrills. Well, I hope we have some coming our way. I'm hoping to capture something right out of Kurt Darling's old escapades. That reminds me. He'll be joining us at next port. I should get his picture at some time. Kasha holds up her camera with a sense of pride before holding it up to her face. Stand still, Shaw. The captain sent me to grab a copy of the manifest. Oh, yes. Putting together a manifest of the crew for you. She hands you an annotated document. Here it is. The crew manifest. Fantastic. Of all the people we've seen so far... No scouts yet. We haven't seen the engineers, the scientists, just the specialists. Resources that we might have, key items, etc. It's a work in progress. The scout team are to join us in the next port, and the captain's forbidden me from the boiler room. You can ask the others to get their portraits taken. I'd be very grateful. Don't want to leave anyone out. Thank you. She smiles. I will not disturb you of your work any further, officer. More shots for you to take, want to get before the sun lowers, anyhow. Safe shots, officer, don't worry. You leave her do her work. Perfect. So now we, we've done that, so now there's actually some more over here. There's two Johns. It's about a large man with a youthful gait carrying a heavy crate over his shoulder with relative ease. Oh, your officer Shaw. He has a bright, warming smile. Two Johns. That's what they call me. I'm sure you'll get your nickname later. Dujon attempts to offer handshake but loses control of the crate. He struggles before firmly holding it in place with both hands. Uh, maybe later. Work awaits. So that's someone that we've seen now. Um, so when we go here, now we have two Johns. He's a salt born, stowaway. Kind of get a little bit of people that are their traits and things, which is nice. Poor castle appears to be locked. Alright, so I guess we're going down. Not a whole lot we can do here. At least not yet. Okay. Approach the cook. Approach the cord accordionist. And the crew, redhead man with the thick beard, sits proud, playing on an ivory accordion. He spots you and ceases in his plane. Need something? Nice accordion. Mind if I see? Accordion player takes a step back as you approach. You can see from there, no touching. Okay. Um, I was just looking for the Stoke Brothers. Emergency? Could be, I'm not sure. Just meeting with Hunt. Just a meeting with Hunt. You're speaking to one of them. Grimly Stoke. We'll head up after dinner. You can go now. And gestures to the cook across the room before resuming his playing. So the cook is the other one, I'm assuming. Alright. The crew have their meal. Passes in relative silence. To return to their posts, the hammocks are unfurled in preparation for the evening. Twilight falls. The dinner table. Over dinner, you overhear the newly picked up stowaway speaking with a one-armed man. But da, you're lucky Hunt didn't throw you overboard. Half a mind to do that myself. Come on, da. I'm here to help. There, no, that involves work. Don't expect special treatment. I won't. You're an impossible trial to me. So, Ward is added to the manifest. We can head on back up. Another person over here. I see one of Templeton's science team pacing around the mid-deck, searching through some luggage that has been pulled from the cabin. Let me look in the light. Where was it now? He notices you. 
Oh, Sarge, correct? Dwight Glossley. Apologies, I seem to have misplaced something while settling in the cabin. Bottle of wine, actually. Can't be hard to miss. It'll turn up eventually. I would hope so. My wife and I brought it to celebrate with. Be saved for the journey back, of course. Well, if you find it, please let me know. Perfect. If we do, I will. Uh, we can enter our cabin, although I don't think there's anything here other than the journal. So let's head to the top. Ooh. Okay, so this is what we want to do. So we'll go check out the ocean first. As you look over the railing out to the ocean, a wisp of smoke flies past your face. You turn to examine and spot a sailor with a pipe in his mouth. A sheet of paper in his hand overlooking the stirring waters. Smoking sailor. Looking at something. Um, who are you? Tashi. Introducing himself, Tashi falls silent begins to read the letter. Trying to draw, draw a conversation from him may be similar to extracting teeth. And it's shut tight, so we can't go in there. So, let's talk to Templeton. It's about Templeton looking out into the sunset. As you approach, he turns to you and nods. Uh, Officer Shaw. Sometime before we see a sunset such as this again. The light distribution toward the southern pole is quite the change. Um. I noticed you weren't at dinner with the others. I prefer to eat in solitude. I have my own cabin, and I make use of it. Templeton keeps his focus on the reflection of the setting sun over the stirring waters of the ocean. This is great expectation upon us, officer. From whom? Who is this benefactor of ours? That's not for you to know, not yet. Templeton looks down, catching his reflection in the ocean surface. He looks back up to the sunset. Quite the sight, but it wouldn't linger upon it too long. He should try to retire for the evening. It's important the first officer be well rested. And that's how we finish off the week. So this is what we can do. Um, honestly, we don't need to. It's super warm right now. I'd like to just do halves because I don't think that matters too much. Um, the ship makes its last port at Orca Island. Cordell's sledding dogs are picked up. The scouting crew and Kurt Darling are picked up. The days are getting brighter as you move further south. Perfect. And we head into week two. Two weeks on the Temperance. Saved game to tree. There's a wrap on your cabin door. Come in. The door swings open to reveal Kurt Darling, all but filling its frame, grinning ear to ear. Yeah, we're at least going to go through two weeks um, in, the, in this recording. There you are, Officer Shaw. The ship's navigator is a difficult man to miss. Stature and reputation precede him. Adorned with a slew of apparatus, the seemingly one-man expedition would be known to anyone following the heyday of exploration and the merchandising that followed. I've no need, no time for subsidies. It's an honor. I know little of the man. It's an honor, really. A wealth of invaluable experience in such hostile environments. Wonder he's not being swept up to some other post. Hiding away from the rest of us, are you? You always this early to rise. These days I tend to enjoy a good lion, but not during an expedition. You know what they say of early birds and worms. Apologies not stopping by sooner, Shaw. Took a while to set up my team, and a great deal of the crew were quite eager to meet me. Not often they work with a film star, is it? Certainly. It's completely understandable on their part. There aren't many who haven't seen my films, particularly in this line of work. More than one fellow on this crew said my work inspired them to explore the world. Quite the honor, is it not? Sorry. Um, I'm certain you received that praise of 10. 
or often. Uh, not as often as you would think. Uh -huh. I suppose I did get distracted, didn't I? Anyway, I was hoping you'd join me up on deck. Of course. Why? You finally entered the pack. I thought you'd want to see it for yourself. Sure. I'll be right behind you, Kurt. Walks away before turning back. Oh, and enjoy the morning. It's a good day, Shaw. Har. All right. He leaves. We can open up our journal and just kind of give an idea of what we've done so far. So we'll head out. We'll leave. Doctor's office remains locked. Seems the doctor isn't in or perhaps enjoying his sleep. Yet to come across the ship's doctor even after all this time. Let the lad rest. Does it do anything if we keep doing it? Nope. <laughs> Some games. <laughs> you can do stuff like that, right? You know, one of the science team returning to their room. Ah, Mrs. Gloss. Did you have a good rest? She nods to you. Uh, hello. Not expected many to be up this early. Harriet Glosley. I believe I met your husband. Ah, yes. Dwight made mention of your encounter. He's still fast asleep. He's adjusted to the ship well. I believe a walk around the ship would help acclimate, accl acclimate myself to the ways. Perhaps it will take some more time. With that, Mrs. Gloss makes her way back to her cabin. Pine team aren't used to the sea or the sailor folk. Quite the culture clash, isn't it? Well, I'm sure they'll get used to it over time. Nice. Um, we'll hop down here just to take a view. Any of the crew are still here? Don't. <laughs> yeah. You never want to wake up the uh, sleeping crew. Okay. What do you want, cat? Whew. Here, one second. Is that to deal with my cat? Okay, what to do here? I mean, the game is very pretty. Let's go check out the helm. At the stern, you notice an older sailor at the helm. The old man takes in a deep breath in the cold air before letting out a satisfied exhale. Morning, and good morning to you. He eyes you up. Officer Shaw, right? Lefty. Call me that on account of, well, it should be obvious. He chuckles. Don't worry about the bad sight. It's all feel. Just keeping her steady. He examines you. Surprised Hunt pick you from outside of his first for his first mate. Surprised as well. He seems the insular type. He is. Must be something special for Hunt to look outside the ranks. Hunt doesn't have that much fondness for the military, but at least it means you've got the work ethic. Points like these are about the only piece I get from the younger lot. You should take these moments when you can. He returns to his attention to the helm. As you get older, I suppose you learn the valuable of quiet moments. Let's hope we're just as diligent when we're old and gray. Myself before you, of course. All right, Harold has been added. Join Kurt at the bow of the ship. You both feel the temperance break the flows below you. Gripping the railing, he draws an enormous breath. The footing beneath rises as the ship mounts an impending ice flow. There's a moment's hesitation before a profound crack relieves the ship, cascading across the ice. He exhales. See? Nothing like it. You weren't wrong. It's something alright. Look at the ice. No two cracks are the same. All caused by us. By the laws of nature, this place wants us dead, and yet... Here we are, traversing in harmony. How fantastic is that? 
How far are we from land? About a week's sail from the last known location of the old Viscount. Assuming she isn't exactly where they left her, we can take smooth sailing for granted. Same goes for the daylight. Remain this bright for long once the winter encroaches. Beautiful as the ice is on this course, it's going to get thicker. He looks out across the white. We won't be so confident when the leads dry up and we're stuck here until next cycle. We'd need to change course. Avoid the packs. You inform Captain Hunt. He won't listen to me. He thinks I've been dulled by retirement. Probably seen more ice than he has whiskey. We have more than enough supplies if it comes to that. Not supplies I'd be worried about in that situation. People will turn on each other before they let themselves starve. Have you ever experienced a long night winter? It's not pleasant, to say the least. If it comes to it, we'll adapt. Ha, huh, I can see why he hired you. You should understand, Robin. We're only as good as the unhappiest man. <laughs> Cheer up, then. He smiles. I'll do what I can. Thank you for bringing this to my attention. Kurt nods and turns back to look across the ice. Yeah. This is very nice. Serene. Okay, I just wanted to do a quick check. No one else is up and awake. Alright. Let's take requests for the day. Ah, Shaw. Ready for another day's work. Did you hear Kurt's advice? He wants us to switch course. Aye, uh, he had a few words to share. He may have been an expert in his time, but these days Kurt is one with more money than sense. Anyway, back to work. I was hoping you'd help me work through a few more requests for the crew. I have noticed the line pooling outside. Everyone wants something, it seems. Call them in as you please. Alright, let's go Hammond. A short, sour-faced man in engineering clothing... Um, or comes in. Are you acting daft, Hunt? Not with intention. Not bloody surprised you didn't notice. Shaw, this is our chief engineer, Clive Hammond. An opinionated one. What is it, Hammond? You've hit the ice and you haven't assigned any extra men down to the boiler. You have your engineering team. we got six arms between us. I need more manpower maintaining this, sailors. Many of the crew have their own tasks they're busy with. I know I've already assigned Smurf on a matter. Captain turns to you. Who do you think this? How many do you think is fair? One, three, more. Okay. Well, I say we give him him and the dad. And we could also give him two Johns. That way we have still some extra in case, you know, Corvid has something that he wants to talk to us about. Um, and cash as well. Take two Johns, Runt and Runsta. You're giving me a ward? Ward with one bloody arm? Young young Runt could use someone to teach him on the job without his father. Don't get me started on the handy of the bloody stowaway. Would you rather none? He holds his tongue. Fine. Tell me how right I was when we we're buried under the ice. Good spirit, that one, beneath the oil and the temper. Won't be seeing much of him, though. First, bury him, burrow himself in the boiler room. Let's go, Corvid. Hunt, you asked for a report on how the stowaway was doing? Hi. Seems, is he setting in well? He has, indeed. Needs another mouth to feed, but the boy works hard and doesn't ask much. He has his dad to guide him as well. I'm sure the father is ecstatic. Worried sick, but happy, I. Well, what do you know, Shaw? Oh, nice. Increase our decorum. Perhaps we were right to keep the boy aboard. No, that's it. Camp Shaw. The thought occurred to me the other day while looking through the crew manifest, and well, it might be a little bit late to this, so we've already entered the ice. Out with it. Thought it would be good to have individual photos of the crew for your report. Not only my report, good reference for the manifest, but faces and names. If that crew has served me for years, some decades. I have a little problem putting faces to names. Your thoughts, Shaw? Seems like a good idea, if nothing else, makes a good souvenir. Mental of this expedition, are you? Some proper photographs will have some historical weight to it. Well, go for it, I see no problem there. I'll arrange for pictures to be taken when the, for the crew have their dinner. Thank you. 
time. I'll attempt to get as many inv individual crew photos as I can. You're still welcome to help on that matter, Shaw. That's that. I have that all settled. Perhaps we shouldn't rule out old Kurt. Uh, the man thinks there could be alternate path through the ice. He's free to search for it. Shaw, meet with him when you have time. Changing course or not, we'll want one of his scouts set up in the crow's nest. Take care of that, and you'll be done for the day. All right. This guy. Seasick. Lovely. That's the guy that we saw earlier on the boats. All right. I'll go ahead and see what he's doing here. I mean, other than being sick. Um, pat him on the back. You make your way up the man, reach out your arm, pat the sickly fellow on the back. As soon as your hand reaches him, he jolts upright in shock. Bespectacled, bespectacled young man, shaking with unease. He stares at you for a brief moment, a look of shame plastered on his face. S sorry. Compose yourself, man. We should be able to handle the waves. You alright? Um, yes, well... Not really. Uh, I'm very sorry. The man turns around hurriedly in the opposite direction, avoiding your gaze. Arthur Nutty. Okay. While examining the rigging of the ships, you notice a figure darting by, climbing up the ropes with ease. The figure lands on their feet before dusting themselves off. Their outfit denotes one of Kurt's scouting crew. Ah, no problems. She looks to you. And you are. Officer Shaw yourself. Flick, I'm one of Kurt's crew. Don't worry about my safety, I know what I'm doing. Trust me, Kurt doesn't hire just anyone. Well, he didn't hire me for no reason. Got the medals in gymnastics if you're worried about my credentials. Flick jumps up and returns to scaling the rigging of the ship. Cool. Zorin Killiper. Well, send me up there and I'll get you a reading. The scientist eyes the man's cane and turns to you. I believe the navigator means you to send one of his scouts. The navigator clears his throat and taps his cane. Of course, ahem. If you find one of mine, you'll they'll get you a reading rightly. Oh, there we go. They ascend to the nest and take a reading with the sextant. All clear from up top. Yeah, so this is our map. Viscount Island, last known location. Orca Island, last port you made. And where we are. Okay, and that's it. Now we can listen at the door. We overhear two of the nearly arrived scouting crew talking. Ah, Quizly. You any trouble settling in? Not too bad. I can't wait for another chance to sleep, though. Proper navigator never rests until their work is done. Of course, of course. I take it you had no issues settling in. Not at all. The crew are a funny lot. Well, Kurt certainly caught your attention. Har, do you think any of them would mistake Kurt and myself? I think you'd collapse from joy if they did. Har, perhaps. Yep, probably. Anything in my cabin that we can do? Not yet. Alright. Well, let's head down to the lower deck. There's the pumps. Nothing to note in there. When we enter the pow pantry, a bag of flour drops on your head. <laughs> the hells was that? Gnomes! You wipe the flour off before continuing. Lovely. Okay. Shouldn't have went in there yet, apparently. Should talk to the people. Ah, you must be Shaw. Seems you've met my brother already. You're in Stoke, but nobody calls me that. On this ship, I'm known as Junior. Junior, why the name? To be obvious, you met my brother. It's the burden that comes with being the younger. Now, one step ahead of me. Add those tins into the hoosh, and I'll be good for dinner. What will it be this week? Shaw? Well, there we go. So this is something that we'll do every time, or that we can. It just gives us a bit of extra warmth and stuff, or a bit of extra food. If we can do that, add to the pot. We'll be able to find more. 
and then we'll be able to uh, call the crew for dinner. Crew have their meal. Or shall we toast to the ice? Aye. The days get longer, but dinner dinner is fixed. We'll see us all through the days and the darkest nights. Crew have returned their pots. The hammocks are unfurled in preparation for the evening. You can't notice that it's still bright light outside. Those two sailors passing by from the dinner table. An ebriated sailor on wobbling legs leaning on the shoulder of another. Ah, uh, good times, good times. Need to learn to handle your drink, Tucker. Uh, but I'm fine. My mates can carry me, eh, Cavity? They can also drop you. Have two Johns carry you next time. <laughs> Are you asleep? Shit. Alright. Two more people that we found. Knock on the door. No response. Still no response. You hear the hound sounds of rustling inside. It finally swings open one Templeton science team. Annoyed scientist. Yes? Do you require my presence? Um, acquainting myself with the crew. Who are you? You should know I'm the meteorologist of this expedition. Andre Isaac. I'm not required for anything. You asked not to be disturbed further. Okay. Let's head to the above deck. And here we go, we can get more people to hear. You overhear two engineers chatting, or rather you hear one engineer speaking with another. Grips. Don't know if the chief could could stay down there all evening. Hmm? Did you ever see Hammond eat? I haven't. Maybe he doesn't even eat. Man's not human if he can work all day and night on that boiler. Probably doesn't sleep either. Probably sleeps. I dick, it's figurative. Right. <laughs> okay. And then the forecastle where we'll find Cordell. The dogs regard her with rapt attention as she paces between them, bowl in hand. The largest joins her side as you approach. Try some. Sure, you merely burn your mouth on the hot broth. Surprisingly tasty. Feel yourself warming up. You seem to enjoy it. I'm afraid there's only so much. If you want more, it will be among the dogs' leftovers. Penguin, some blubber, fats and proteins. Fastest way to hydrate them. Something you need? Where did they come from? Hard to tell the exact breeds at this point. They belong here more than we do. Unlike us, they need the ice. It cools them through their paws as they run. They'd overheat otherwise. You've been on the ice for a long time. Or, oh, who's that beside you? This is Stanberry. Bark. Strong animal. Yes. They handle stress differently, adapt quickly. There's plenty to be learned from them. You love these animals? They need me, and you'll need them. Let's pet them. You ruffle its head and it tries to lick the broth from your fingers. And then with that, we can end week two. And we can still keep it at half. And I still think we can keep it at half. Fuel rations for sure at half. We should be fine. Another week passes, the temperance has finally entered the thick ice leads. The days grow even brighter. And with that, we're going to take a pause from here. Actually, two weeks and about an hour. That's that's pretty good. Um, we'll probably aim to do these in like two-week chunks. Like these these week chunks or whatever are really good for it. But, but probably about an hour long um, episodes, I think, would probably be best. And then, yeah, we'll go from there. Hope you enjoyed The Pale Beyond, and we'll see you next time. Bye for now.